In this video, we're going to look at what happens if two planes intersect. And in particular, we're going to come up with this notion of the angle between two planes. So one possibility with the intersection of, of planes is that they actually don't intersect at all. For instance, you can imagine this pair of planes that I'm going to try to sketch here. These are two planes that are parallel, and then there's absolutely no intersection between these two at all. However, there is still something we can say about this. In, in the scenario where they're parallel, the, the normal sticks straight up of the one, and the normal sticks straight up of the other. So maybe I'll call it N1 and N2. And in this case where I've got the parallel, what I'm going to say is that my normal vectors, they have to have the same direction. They might not have the same length. I might put a scalar K here. Uh, you might have the, the one normal being, say, the negative of the other, or twice as long, or negative twice as long. But we do know that they have the same direction, and so they're just going to be a scalar multiple of each other. So that's one possibility. So I'm going to sketch a couple planes that are going to intersect. So let's draw one that looks sort of like this. So that's my first plane. And I draw it with a little, a little bit of a perspective here. And then if I'm going to try to draw a different one, maybe I'll choose a bit of a different color here, I'm going to imagine that it cuts down at some sort of angle here. And then it goes off like this. And then it cuts down. And I'm going to put some dotted lines here as it goes underneath of the plane and cuts down and picks up like that. So this is my picture of my intersection of two lines. And I want to kind of imagine here that there is this line of intersection that goes through where these two different planes are going to intersect. So if you can imagine, I've got one plane and I've got another plane, and as they both cut through, you get this line of intersection, and that's what I've put down here in the dark black. All right. Now, there are several things that I can ask about this scenario. I could ask, for instance, what is the equation of that line of intersection? Another thing that I can ask would be, what is the angle between the two different lines? So for example, if I, if I look here, there appears to be some sort of theta value. And I imagine I got my one plane like this, I've got my other plane coming like that. There's some angle theta in between them. So those are the kind of questions that I might ask. What's the equation of this line of intersection and what is the angle between these two different planes? Now, one of the major things that we know for planes is that if I have an equation of a plane, I can immediately get out of that a normal vector. So let's take the more horizontal looking one. I I'm going to imagine that I've got one point here in the center. That's going to be my base point. It's one of these points on this line of intersection. And then I have a normal vector, which I'm going to refer to as n1 to be associated with the plane one that I have. And, and if I have my horizontal plane, it's going to stick straight up. And then likewise, if I go back into the blues, I have this, this one that's coming down at a bit of an angle here, but I also get a normal for that, and I'm going to call that the normal two, and that's associated with this second plane that I have here. So then, this is the interesting point. If I think back to what the angle was, we wrote the angle down here on the left between the two planes, that angle is the same angle as this angle that we have here, that angle theta that is between the two different normals is going to be the same. So our big sort of takeaway here is that the angle between the planes, and by conventions, I, I choose the acute angle, not the obtuse angle between the planes, the acute angle between the planes, is the angle between my normal vectors, my n1 and my n2. And the nice thing is that I know quite a bit about how to deal with angles between vectors. We, we've studied that several times. We can either use the dot product or we can use the cross product. In particular, we've seen that n1 dotted with n2 is going to be equal to the length of n1, the length of n2 times cosine of theta. So this gives us a way to figure out what the angle between the planes are, provided I can figure out what my two normals are. Okay, so let's see an example. I'm going to imagine that I have one plane given by 2x minus y plus z minus 1 is equal to 0, and then that I have a second plane given by x plus z 
plus 3 is equal to 0. So the first thing that I should be able to do is glance at these equations of planes and I can pull out what the normal vectors are. The normal vectors are just going to be the coefficients of the x, y, and z. So my n1 is therefore coefficient of x is 2 minus 1, 1. That's the coefficients there. And for my second plane, it's 1. Be careful, it's always the 0. If the y doesn't appear, that means that there's going to be a 0 in front of it. 1, 0, and another 1. And then I can compute what my dot product is going to be. I can therefore say that cosine of theta is the dot product of these things, 2 minus 1 dotted with 1, 0, 1, divided out by their length. So the divided out by the first one is 2 squared plus 1 plus 1. And divided out by the n2 here is 1 squared plus 1 squared. All right, carrying on, my dot product is the sum of the product of each of the components. So the first two together is going to be 2 plus 0 plus 1. There we go. We're going to have 3 on the top. And then divided by the square root of 4, 5, 6. There's a square root 6 on the bottom and a square root 2. So if we look at the square root of 6, that's the same thing as square root of 2 times square root of 3. We have a 3 on the top, so that cancels and just leaves me with just a square root 3. And then I have two square root 2s on the bottom, so I get 3 halves. And then my final trick is I have to work backwards here, and I want to say that arc cosine of square root of 3 halves, I can probably remember what this one was. It should be a relatively standard triangle for us. So this is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle, and it's pi divided by 3 that sits down there. So what do I get my answer? Pi divided by 3. So my claim is that if I've got my two different planes, that the angle between their planes is pi divided by 3. Another thing that I could try to do, sort of keeping in the same example, is I could try to find the equation of that line. So let's try to find the equation of the intersection line. So to do this, for an equation of a line, I need to know a point, and I need to know its direction. So how are we going to be able to do this? Well, to get a vector which is pointing in the direction of the line, I'm going to go back to my picture here. If I want to have a vector which is lying in the direction of the line, I've got my, my n1, which is in the plane, I've, or it's perpendicular to the plane, sorry. I've got my n2, which is also perpendicular to the other plane. And I want a vector which which is going to be inside of both planes, which is another way of saying I want a vector which is orthogonal to both of these normals. And I can do that by the cross product. So I can therefore take this vector, I'm going to draw it right through my angle. This is the vector n1 cross n2, and it lies in that line of intersection and therefore orthogonal to both of the two different normal vectors. All right, so going back to our example, we should be able to compute this. We have our two different normal vectors given, and we can compute the cross product. So n1 cross n2. This is going to be given by my i, j, k. I'm going to plug my numbers in. 2 minus 1, 1, and 1, 0, 1. And so in the i direction, I'm going to get a minus 1. In the j direction, I'm going to get a 2 minus 1 is 1, but I always have to put up that sneaky minus sign there, so I'm going to put a minus sign. And k, 0, minus a minus 1 is plus 1. So there is going to be my vector in the direction. Now, I'm not quite done, because I also have to go and find a point which is on the line, right? I found the direction, but I need a point and a direction. So to be able to get the point on the line, I have the equations, and I just have to think about some x, y, z that happens to satisfy both of them. And you can go and try to play around and do a little bit of guesswork to find that, but it can sometimes make it easier just to force one of the variables to be zero. So I'm going to suppose that my x is equal to zero here. And this is just saying, look, I've got this gigantic line here. It's got infinitely many points to it that could work. I just need to choose one of them. Why don't I make my life a little bit easier, and I'm going to, going to take the the intersection with the yz plane, where I force x equal to 0, and that's going to tell me the point on the line that, that happens to have this coordinate. So this is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. And so looking back at what my equations are going to be, that's going to give me the two different equations, minus y 
plus z minus 1 is equal to 0. And the equation z plus 3 is equal to 0. So I just plugged in x equal to 0 back into my major foundational ones. And it's going to work out pretty nicely at this stage. Because this second equation just tells me that my z is equal to minus 3. And then if I plug that back into the first equation, what do I get? I get a z is minus 3. So z minus 3, z minus 1 is a minus 4. So then if I move that to the other side, I get minus y is equal to 4. And therefore, y is equal to minus 4. And so final answer is the equation of my line now is the point. The x was 0, the y was minus 4, and the z was minus 3. And then I go out a distance t in this direction of the cross product, minus 1, minus 1, 1. That is my equation for the line of intersection. And, well, that is kind of it for the course. I can't think of anything at all that we would possibly need to do beyond that. Except possibly, I, I seem to recall many, many people have telling me that I owe you the playing of the piano. Now, I, I refuse to do that. I, I think that's completely ridiculous. This is a math course. We do not need to be playing the piano in a YouTube video for that. But the ukulele, however, I think that is entirely fair game. So here you go. All right, you have a good, good luck on your final exams.